friends, welcome to Wonderful Word Wednesday. I'm Barb Nemechek. Hello everyone, welcome back to Sellersville. Uh, I am Jim Nemechek, and what are we talking about this week, Barb? Well, this week we're going to be talking about a special observance day on September 1st called National Food Bank Day, which occurs each year on the first Friday in September. I have never heard about that day until now, but I'm guessing based on the title that it's to encourage all of us to commit to contribute things to food banks so that no one will go to bed hungry. How long has this food bank day been around? Well, the National Food Bank Day was created by St. Mary's Food Bank, a nonprofit which was founded by John Van Hengel in the year 1967. John formed this foundation to prevent wastage of groceries. St. Mary's food banking system has been serving for over 50 years. This food bank system was the inspiration for the formation of many other food banks. Wow, 1967? Mm -hmm. That's almost as old as we are. Since this is the first time I'm hearing it, the National Food Bank Day needs better promotion. Mm -hmm. But food banks uh, across the country uh, do play their part and help some 42 million men, women, and children who do struggle with food insecurity. People may experience food insecurity for many different reasons. They range from illness to a job loss to a change in personal circumstances. Sadly, some of these circumstances could happen to anyone. Food banks then fill the gap for those living on a meager budget or those who suddenly experience a loss of their income. The Department of Pennsylvania reports that each day nearly 1.7 million Pennsylvanians face food insecurity as a daily part of their lives. The Pennsylvania population total is roughly 12.89 million people. The World Counts organization states that around 9 million people die every year of hunger and hunger-related diseases. That is more than AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis combined. Those death numbers indicate the seriousness of the need to feed the poor. What's even more concerning is that because as food prices keep rising, it may drive even more people into hunger and perhaps even poverty. Let's take a minute and do a simple exercise ever heard someone say, wait, just a minute. Of course, many times. <laughs> well, sometimes a minute can seem like a long time. Other times, a minute seems to fly by. I'm going to ask you, Jim, to turn on your phone timer for one minute. And I want all of us to think of their favorite foods they like to eat for one minute. Are you ready? I am. All right, great. Go. Minutes up. In addition to the list that you showed our viewers, I thought of a lot of good things to eat as well. 
just coming off vacation, I'm thinking salmon, um, thinking Chateaubriand, um, apple strudel, mm -hmm. cheesecake, one of your glyphs. Yeah. Uh, amongst the, the favorites I grew up on, uh, halupki, halushki, pierogies, uh, and all those and many more. Well, according to humanitarian organizations, 15 people just died in that one minute while we were all thinking about all the things we like to eat. And of those 15 people that died, many of them were children. Unfortunately, children die frequently because of hunger, as many people are trapped in poverty. The Bible, of course, tells us in multiple places to feed the hungry. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 42 to 45, Jesus said, I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. They asked, Lord, when did we see you hungry or, or thirsty and not help you? He answered, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. It's important to note that the actions Jesus described here are not what caused people to be approved or condemned. Instead, feeding the hungry and the thirsty is a demonstration of our faith in Jesus. It says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. Wow, that clearly tells us all that those who show no love for believers are not themselves really believers. In John chapter 3, verses 17, 18, it states it in this way. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? It is sad that there is still hunger in the world when, in actuality, enough grain is produced to supply everyone on earth with more than two pounds of grain per day. The Committee on World Food Security reports that we produce enough food to feed the global population. That's enough to feed 10 billion, yet we are at just over 8 billion currently. There is enough for everyone. The problem is our food systems. The way we produce, harvest, transport, process, market, and consume food. Poverty, unfortunately, is the greatest cause of hunger around the world. In both higher wealth as well as low to middle income countries. Most people who are hungry live in extreme poverty. And that's defined as income of $1.90 per day or less as per the World Bank. For parents who may be struggling to make ends meet, the ability to look their children in the eyes over a meal instead of into hungry eyes is the difference made by those of us who support food banks. Mm -hmm. According to the UN Committee on World Food Security, healthy diets are not affordable for more than 3 billion people. Poor nutrition contributes to nearly 45% of the deaths of children under the age of five. And one in five children are stunted, which compromises their capabilities and opportunities for their future. Now, many food banks offer educational opportunities that help people change their situation and begin anew. Food banks do their part, uh, not only in providing 
people with food resources, for those who may be living in poverty, but by also giving them those educational programs to help them change their lives. Our call to action this week is to remember that the Lord has given us so much and we need to share it with those in need. It says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and in truth. Some people are all talk and no action. God's standard for love manifests itself in action. A believer of true love does something about meeting the needs of others. Now, each of you watching, and us included, need to take action this week. Think about this. What are we all going to do in this week to help those who have food insecurity issues? Let us now end with a word of prayer. Dear Lord God, it is hard to see children suffer, especially from hunger. We ask you to give them daily bread today and throughout the coming months. Please provide the food they need to grow and to thrive. Please open our hearts in a way that we can help others facing food insecurity here in the United States or abroad. We give thanks for our own daily food and ask that you help us to see how truly blessed we are. You may add your own personal intentions at this moment. Thanks for joining us back here, and uh, we look forward to getting back into our regular routine. <laughs> Wonderful Word Wednesday, obviously on Wednesdays, uh, both Facebook and YouTube channels. Thanks again. Next week, catch you then. Bye, everyone.